Stan Jabalisco here, proprietor and operator of amateur radio station W1GV, Whiskey One, Good Vibrations, coming at you from the black holes of Dakota Toratory, United States of Antennas, with another variant on the old attic dipole antenna, this time with loading coils. Now I uh, outlined in a previous video how you can end load with a capacitance hat of sorts an attic dipole antenna like this. Now this is a view from directly above the center of the roof of your house which of course is painted Obama white for energy conservation. And that's no joke, by the way. It really helps. In any case, this is the top view. This green, heavy dark green, is your antenna wire. And it is a dipole antenna. So, you feed it in the center, right here. Does that look like the center to you? Sure doesn't look like the center to me, but in any case, it's the center. This is where you feed the antenna, and you don't want to bother with antenna tuners, either at your station or remotely. I think that's a mistake, because it will force you to operate on a single band, but such is life. Now this antenna might be resonant, and it might not be resonant. Suppose that your home is 40 feet long and maybe 25 feet wide. And you don't have any obstructions in your attic. So your, your attic is easy to work with. It's a converted attic like mine. And you feed it with coaxial cable right here. And then, of course, that goes to your radio. 20-foot leg here, 20-foot leg here, 12 and a half foot here, 12 and a half, 12 and a half, 12 and a half. Very simple attic. This is an end-loaded antenna. I do not have a formula, by the way, for how many effective feet it, it adds to put two wires here instead of one, but I'd say about half again as much. So instead of 12 and a half feet, you'd get something on the order of 18 or 19 feet, plus your 20 feet is going to give you on the order of 38 feet on either side of the dipole in effect. Well that's not resonant on any amateur band that I know of. However, you can place tapped variable loading coils right there where the feed points join the T's like that. A more uh, detailed view of the situation might be obtained by, well, let's just uh, resort to simplicity here. I'm, I'm a little bit, still haven't learned quite all of the ins and outs of this antenna. But let's look at this point where the T joins the end of the antenna. The T is a continuous length of wire not exactly straight and the antenna wire itself comes along and then goes through this variable inductor which is a tapped inductor. Remember the old 18V vertical by high gain? It's a tapped inductor something like that. There's a little alligator clip here and you just by experiment mess with this coil and its identical mirror image on the other side. 
you make sure that the settings of each coil are or the settings of the two coils are always identical so again you have that venerable condition known as bilateral symmetry one side of your dipole is exactly a mirror image of the other side. It's fed in the center, as I said before, with coaxial cable 50 ohms that runs down to your shack. You won't get a perfect one-to-one -one standing wave ratio here, but it will certainly be two-to-one or less. Good enough for our intents and porpoises. So there you have it. Now, what band do you want to operate on? Uh, the effective length of this antenna, as I said, is something on the order of uh, 48 to, did I say 48 feet, 38 feet? You can load that antenna to operate on the 7 megahertz band fairly easily. And you won't get a, a particular loss of efficiency either. If you go for 3.5 megahertz, you will suffer a loss of efficiency and a high standing wave ratio because of a low radiation resistance right here. As for the other bands, you can do some trial and error. You might use capacitors here instead of the coils to raise the effective resonant frequency thereby maybe making it possible to operate on the 10 megahertz band. Actually, um, I believe that you'd probably still need a coil on the 10 megahertz band, but certainly on the 14 megahertz band you would want to use a capacitor. The answer to the question, how do I work this? What are the formulas? Uh, calculate this please or how do I calculate it the answer is you don't this is not rocket science this is not calculation science well maybe this is like model rocket science it's no big loss if it doesn't work you just keep tinkering with it and experimenting with it in true amateur form until you reach a satisfactory conclusion. It might take you a day, it might take you two days, but you keep fooling around with it and if you want to get on the air bad enough, then you can and suffer RFI from the home wiring of your house and cause RFI to the home wiring of your house and others thereby making all of your neighbors exclaim simultaneously and in unison in a great rage those damn radio hams Stan Gibalisco W1GV saying 73 which means best regards in ham radio jargon and so long which translates to di -di -di da di da You are going to use CW, aren't you?